<laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's like... See that? <laughs> like, made like a score. <laughs> so it was like 15 or 14 or something. Still remember every song. How dramatic is that? <laughs> song sucks. Another bad song. I'm trying to think, where was? Oh, wow, remember all these songs? Remember like electric? Remember, is this crystallized? Is this... We had a whole slew of songs we were gonna do. Kind of more of the grittier stuff we were writing. And then I th I'm trying to see when I went and just was like, fuck it, I want to write what I want to write. Let's see if I can find my belt. What pants was I wearing? Um, I'm in the process of moving into this spot. It's been crazy. It's been a lot of back and forth. Yeah. Sometimes I love the fact that my life is extremely unpredictable. And sometimes it's a little bit too much. But hey, I'm never bored. Definitely never bored. Yeah, I was sleeping on my manager's floor, essentially, in his room for two months. And now we just moved into this Airbnb temporarily. We're making it into our headquarters. I think it took a while for me to figure out what I wanted to say, what kind of artist I wanted to be. And if you don't know, how is anyone else gonna know? How is the public gonna know? How is the label gonna know? So that was really important for me to figure that out. And then obviously with coronavirus, <laughs> just locked myself away in the studio. Yeah, I think I was just really writing just to write for me. Like I have to write music, otherwise I go crazy, so. Yeah, I think I was just writing just kind of what I wanted to for the first time. So I'm really writing what I felt like I had to. And I had a couple months completed myself in the studio to do that, which is honestly, I'm very, very grateful for. Oh. I think about 70% of my DNA is made up of this. <laughs> yeah, I could easily eat this. And I have eaten this about five nights a week. It's my one coffee mug every day. It keeps your coffee hot. It's like electronic. I think it's, it has Bluetooth. <laughs> Literally has. <laughs> Everything has Bluetooth nowadays, right? And there's an app for Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Sometimes you just need simple, consistent things. Who's it? I think I was talking to Tom. It's like, I feel like there's, I have a new idea in my head. But the landscape of my brain is different every single day that, you know, Sometimes maybe I like to have the same mug or the same pasta dinner every night because too much change is overwhelming and I try to keep that change in my mind. It's my old phone, has some demos on it. Oh wow, I haven't seen this in a long time. Well, that's the thing about love. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's me doing my coach version for the girl that actually sang it. One of our friends recorded that voice, but I kind of wanted him to say it in a specific way. So that was me saying it how I was hearing it in my head. I think it was me and Tom jamming on Levitate. Did you play my drums? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, actually. I'm Yeah, I kind of grew up in a chaotic home environment. A lot of change, a lot of volatility. So I was always the kind of good kid. I was the academic kid. I did well in school. I played sports, I had my friends, and just kind of laid low. But I always made music, though. There's something about just writing melodies for me that's very 
don't know, intuitive, calming, meditative. Hey, I think this is my keyboard. Maybe from here. Appreciate it. Thank you. built up frustration with not being able to convey what I wanted to say and I didn't even know that I wanted to say that at the time. And so I think last year with the pandemic and everything, I was able to finally figure that out. And so now having music that we've written and produced ourselves and you know recorded in this spot, it's it's gonna be amazing when we finally get it out there, people can listen to it. And then honestly go right back into doing it again. Like that was the best part. That was the most fun was figuring it out, making the music, just kind of making it up as we went along. And so, yeah, it's kind of funny. As exciting as it is to release this new music and excited as, as I am, really the best part is gonna be doing it again, making the next album, making the next single, so. That's it. Using better samples. Using GarageBand for so long, and then I downloaded Logic. Yeah, beginning of 2020, like January, February, and started being like, okay, I really want to start producing and see what that sounds like. Another shitty verse. I was still recording acoustic through a mic and then distorting it, which is just ridiculous. Now I was using DI guitars. Yeah, that's a cool melody lead line. So now I'm doing some synth stuff. Just having fun, honestly. So many songs. And 99% of them, no one will ever hear. Which is good. A lot of what would, is going to be on the album was written towards the end. It's more rock and then it slowly gets more like alternative and now I'm like kind of going all pop but it's just expressing what's in your head in this form. But even, I mean even Stay the Night. Let me see where it got written. I always call them different, they're never the titles because I never know what's going to happen so I give it some just random title which makes it finding it later a lot harder. Oh, the night. Maybe that's what I called it initially. Let's say I think this is the original one. Oh yeah, this is it. So I think I had two versions. I think I was trying to rip off and mean it by law. I'll, I'll steal lyrics as temporary placeholders, and then write around that, or write melodies around it, or something. So that was the bridge, and then. This is the old chorus. So this was the original song. And so the only thing I kept was the verse. I guess the bridge went to the, or the pre-chorus went to the bridge. But and then the rest, yeah. It's crazy, you never know what you're gonna get. That's the best part, is like you start a song and then it just goes someplace you never expected it to go. But that is the best part, that's the most fun. You just have to write so much. Just, you learn by writing, you learn by doing, and it takes sometimes 50, 100 tries to get something that's actually good. Or it's not and then you have to write a new song. It's terrible, it's just, it's like killing your children every day. It sucks, but I'm also addicted to it can't do anything about it. I never thought about it actually that way, but it's like, it definitely feels like an obsession, like an addiction, but I also love it. But sometimes it does suck, but I feel like anything worthwhile sucks. I don't know. I guess a piece of my soul will always be in Vernon because this music and this album, I think even just being 25, being in the pandemic, living by myself, having all these other things come off of a breakup. There's so many things that combined for me to really be like, okay, 
here I am. What the fuck am I going to do with my life? And what do I want to do? What do I think is important? What do I think is valuable? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you ever really figure it out, but I'm as close as I've ever been. And it's something that I haven't really felt before where it just feels, it feels right. It feels intuitive. The just infinite craziness in my mind and put that into something that I felt like was pretty much all the way there. That's when I realized that, wow, I love this shit. I could do this forever. This is literally day one, which is crazy, but it's fun. And that's like the best part. Yeah, I mean, it also doesn't hurt having your best friends be in your band and support you and put up with all your crazy shit. Cause uh, yeah, I don't know. Being an artist, I guess, is a blessing and a curse because you see things so clearly in your mind and your eye. And if it's not that way in reality, you can either make it that way, which is the best part, or you can't, which is the worst part. And then you have to live with that. And only you know. It's a personal hell or a personal heaven. I guess it's probably both. Maybe that's life, I don't know.